First of all, I owe you an apology. Flight test day for the King Kong 90 GT was supposed to have been weeks ago, but unfortunately in the UK we don't enjoy good flying days quite as often as the rest of the world do. This is about as good as it gets today, and so we're going to be finally flight testing the King Kong 90 GT. So everything's connected up, I've got the DVR going and we've got a lovely clear picture from the King Kong 90 GT. It's a shame there's no heads up display on this, but the receiver that comes with it, the AC800, which you get if you're flying FR Sky, does actually provide full telemetry, which is quite a surprise considering it is a seriously budget receiver. So you could easily rig up some telemetry warnings via your transmitter. Not ideal, but it's better than nothing. So we've got a really, really windy day here. We're going to do our best and see how it goes. So I'm going to actually flick into rate mode. I'm not even going to bother with stabilized. Armed, we've got air mode enabled, so the props are spinning and they are slightly in view, but not a big problem. And let's take off. There we go. So I would say immediately the camera fitted to this little quad is really, really nice. We've got a really nice, strong picture colorful as well um, and um, yeah whoa, we've been blown by the wind here quite a bit I'm not sure how long this flight test is gonna last but let's make the most of it now remember we don't have a model lost alarm on this unfortunately which is a real pain because if we do ditch somewhere we're gonna have to kind of remember where because we're not gonna have any beeping uh, and it's really windy it is coping all right but you can really feel the lightweight this thing is by um, just how much it's being blown away okay so let's go a little bit lower get a little bit of speed up here this is heading into wind now so I'm really struggling full throttle now there we go nose down now therein is another problem with the 90 GT it doesn't have an adjustable camera angle so which is a bit of a shame but there so okay let's have a look at the punch I'm gonna aim into wind here and full throttle now so, I mean, it's good, but it's nowhere near as good as the Aurora 100. A slightly bigger class quadcopter. But uh, it's a good flyer, though. It's nice and stable. You know, I'm, I just wish there was no wind today and I could really enjoy this then. <laughs> uh, but it's going nicely. The stock pids feel pretty good, although it's hard to say in this wind. It... Ah, oh, we crashed. This was really pilot error, but I'm going to choose to blame the wind. As you can see, when I start to face upwards in my loop, the wind facing surface area of the quad increases and it acts as a brake. And so my loop is slowed, as you can see. I should actually really have increased my pitch input and throttled through it, but I hadn't realized just how low I was. But unfortunately, the GT90 doesn't have a lot of power for recovery from situations like this. And so sadly, I hit the floor. Okay, so we get some altitude before we do a roll, and here we go. Uh, oh, okay. So the dynamics of it, you know, the recovery from the roll, etc., it does feel quite locked in. As I said, though, it's very hard to tell with the wind the way it is today. I think the VTX is doing pretty well, and the micro receivers really surprised me. This is the AC800. It's very, very cheap and yet I'm able to get right across to the other end of this field and I've got no interference on the receiver or my control elements anyway. So that's pretty good. That's at least 100 meters away. Pretty impressed with that. But I would say the Aurora 100 definitely has more power. It's got more recovery power at least, um, or so it feels anyway. Uh, oh, the wind is picking up again now. I'm really fighting here. It's such a shame. I think I'm going to have to bring the 90 GT down to this field again to have another proper flying session. The field where I normally fly with the trees and the various ob obstacles, unfortunately, is completely waterlogged at the moment, so totally unusable. Because uh, I would have liked to have twisted this little quad in between some trees as usual, but yeah. I'm afraid, folks, that this is all I can do at the moment. 
unfortunately. Let's go for another punch. Oh, yeah, gets there eventually. No downwash there as we cut the throttle and descend. Not having the lost model alarm is a real problem. And of course, not having the voltage warning that's audible. So you are there dependent on your sensor data coming back from the quadcopter to the transmitter in order to tell you when you need to land and when your battery is going to be going down. So that's a real shame. But I'm going to land it at this point because it's getting a bit too windy. I can barely even get to where I want to land. So bring it down at this point and complete the flight test unfortunately uh, certainly one way to land <laughs> in part one of our review we had a look at the GT90 package and technical specifications now if you've not seen part one yet click the link above or in the video description there's also a link to buy the GT90 there as well and buying via our link doesn't cost you any more money but it does help to support droning on and future reviews via a small commission payment so a summary of the positives first. The GT90 is really well constructed, durable and crash resistant. I actually crashed it quite a few times from some altitude and yet didn't damage any elements of the main frame or technical components. It's a really nice package and it even includes prop guards, very nicely presented. Compared to the older Q90, it has a far more refined and compact 4-in-1 brushless speed controller, which is lighter and less vulnerable. It is very stable in flight and despite the very windy day on which I did this flight test, the PIDs feel very well tuned from the factory. The camera really impressed me the most, better than most that I've reviewed and the colours are vibrant with great contrast and clarity. Despite previously dismissing the AC800 receiver during previous quad flight tests as glitchy, on this occasion it also really impressed me. For a receiver worth only $12, it is really good, for localised flying of course, not for long range. And finally, the GT90 gives a flight time of around 3 minutes, which is about average. Now onto the negatives. The big one for me is that there's no lost model or low voltage buzzer. It can probably be added to the flight controller via a little bit of soldering, but it does seem a shame that King Kong let down this great model by not incorporating one from the factory. It would be nice if the receiver was integral on the flight controller, that of course would save weight and also just improve the build overall. The FPV camera angle is unfortunately non-adjustable, now that may irritate advanced pilots but it won't be so much of an issue for beginner or intermediate pilots. As with most of these tri-blade quads, the props are always easily broken so buy lots of spares, links are in the video description. Disappointingly, the 90 GT does feel slightly underpowered. Now I was flying on a particularly windy day, but despite that the Aurora 100 has significantly more thrust and punch. And finally, it would have been nice if the GT90 included an OSD. It's invaluable with these smaller quads for monitoring flight time and voltages. Overall, the King Kong 90 GT is a really smart looking quadcopter. These smaller scale brushless quads are generally quite brittle and breakable and that's where the 90 GT really stands out. You will struggle to break an arm on this quad. The lacking power could be an issue for some, although by changing the props perhaps more power can be found. It is definitely an upgrade from the King Kong Q90, but without a buzzer or OSD, the Aurora 100 is still, in my opinion, a better overall package, as long as you order the reinforced frame. I hope that you enjoyed the review. Please be sure to comment below with your thoughts, and if you own any of the King Kong brushless micro models, give us a comment below. Give the video a thumbs up and of course click subscribe because two more brushless quads have just arrived and I'll be reviewing them next. Thanks very much for watching.